What are we doing? This is called the Hanging Atwood Machine. And there's a lot of variations of this problem, uh, but what we're gonna do here is kind of the most basic version of this. We take a pulley. Hanging from the ceiling. Now this pulley has no friction on it. There's no friction on the axle. It also has no mass. We're gonna take a massless string and run it over this pulley. We're gonna connect two blocks, one to each end of the string. Now these blocks do in fact have mass. So we're gonna say this block has some mass M1, this block has some mass M2. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna release this system from rest. We're gonna let the two blocks go and we want to calculate their accelerations. Now, depending on which block is heavier, one may go up or down. If this block over here goes up, that means this one's gonna go down. If this block goes up, that means this one's gonna go down. A result should predict which direction this is going to travel in. So what we need to do is establish a direction that we're gonna say is positive. Now, it's not enough to simply say up is positive or down is positive because the positive motion for this block needs to correlate to the positive motion for this block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna say that anything which causes this pulley to rotate clockwise is in the positive direction. Anything causing it to rotate counterclockwise is in the negative direction. Now the importance of this problem is it is a good illustration of Newton's second law. So we're gonna apply Newton's second law to each block individually in order to determine the acceleration of this system. Looking at this block first, there are two forces acting on this block. There's the weight of the block, weight being mass times the acceleration due to gravity. There's also the tension in this string. Now, depending on the relationship between these two masses, this tension may be greater than, less than, or equal to the weight of this block. We don't know, that would be specific to what masses were placed here. If we wanna apply Newton's second law to this problem, we need to go through and simply say that the sum of all forces acting on this block is going to cause this block to accelerate at some rate A. What's important to remember here is this tension in the string is the positive force. This weight is negative because it's downward. It is in fact in the negative direction. If this weight could do whatever it wanted, it would pull this block down, thus causing the pulley to rotate counterclockwise or in a negative direction. So when we say the sum of all forces, we're actually gonna be subtracting M1G, the weight of the block. Now these two forces are the only two forces acting on this block. So they're going to cause this block M1 to accelerate at some rate a. Now if m1g is greater than t, we're going to see negative acceleration. That means the block is going to accelerate downward. If t is greater than m1g, then we're going to see positive acceleration. Looking at block two, we can do the same thing. There's the weight of the block downward and the tension in the string. And again, we're going to apply Newton's second law to block number two. In this case though, it's the weight which is positive. And it's the tension which is going to be negative. You see this weight is trying to pull this block down and the string with it, which would cause the pulley to rotate clockwise. So when we plug our values or variables into Newton's second law, we're going to get this. This is the sum of all forces equals the mass of the block times A. Now what we're left with here is several things. We have tension and acceleration. 
are unknowns in this equation. We have tension and acceleration as unknowns in this equation. And there's one important thing to understand in order to solve this problem. Notice that these two tensions in this problem are the same. If this pulley had mass, or if there was friction applied to the pulley, then the two tensions would be different. But in this case, in this simple case, the two tensions are the same. What that means is if we rearrange one of these equations for tension, we can substitute it into the other. It's just a simple situation where we have two equations with two unknowns. So let's take this term right here, this m1g, and add it over here, thus rearranging this equation to give us this. So now by taking this equation and subbing it in for t here, we have something we can solve. Now remember, all we're trying to do is solve for acceleration here. So I'm gonna take this term home and pull it over here. I'll clean this up a little bit. You'll notice over here, I didn't factor out G. What I wanna be really purposeful about showing is that this M2G is a force. It is the weight of this block minus this M1G, the weight of this block. Realize these are two forces and they're competing against one another. Now, if the two blocks happen to have the same mass, these two forces are gonna cancel each other out. But if one is heavier than the other, these two forces are going to be unbalanced and we'll see acceleration. Looking at this whole thing, it's important to notice the left side of this equation is the sum of all external forces on this system. The right side is nothing other than mass times acceleration. What we have here is the sum of all forces equals ma. Newton's second law has shown up here in the algebra. So all we need to do to solve this problem is simply rearrange it. And that is the Hanging Atwood Machine.